In Jesus name we pray Almighty Father we are grateful once again because you're opening our eyes to see errors in the church so we may correct them and make the peace i mean they make the peace the unity and the oneness we desire a reality i'm asking divine as you are going to open our eyes to this your children will understand the message and they will practice it in jesus name we pray yes we are considering the message ministerial and spiritual gifts in the church ministerial and spiritual gifts in the church ministerial gifts spiritual gifts in the church this is a teaching to make us who are ministers understand these things and operate them well and because god wants us to come together into one we who are true we whose names are in the book of life we that have been called by him into service is is now opening our eyes to see the arrows that have been in the church for this long time so we may avoid it and work together in unity to win the world for him the old testament is the foundation of the new testament in the old testament there were leaders appointed over the spiritual affairs of the children of israel these leaders include the priests the prophets and those in administration all these were addressed as pastors or shepherds i want us to understand how it began in the old testament in the new testament we have several titles where they show in the old testament how were the leaders of god's people addressed how were the preachers called addressed they were addressed as pastors look at it in jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 and i will give you pastors according to mine heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding who are these these pastors include the prophets these pastors include the priests and all the people that watch over god's people teach those people speak the word of god to, those, to god's people to keep them righteous and fitting for god they were given the title pastors it's a general title pastors or else shepherds shepherds look at it in the book of ezekiel chapter 33 i'm um, 34 verse 1 ezekiel 34 verse 1 and 2 and the word of the lord came unto me saying son of man prophesy against the shepherds of israel prophesy and say unto them thus saith the lord god unto the shepherds woe be to the shepherds of israel that do feed themselves should not the shepherds feed the flocks 
Can you see? Shepherd. Those who are taking care of God's people. Those who are ministering to God's people. In whichever capacity, they are summed up as shepherds or pastors. There were no contentions of titles. No. There were no, there were no struggling of there was no struggling of titles. What name do I bear? Pastor. Shepherd. Are you not taking care of God's people? You are a shepherd. You are a pastor. That was a general title that they could bear. That's how God called them. That's how God called them. They could be prophets. They could be priests. But there was a general title called shepherds or pastors that pastor that they bow that is it and that's what we need to understand again concerning miracles miracles signs and wonders were multiplied in the old testament by the ministers you could go to the old testament see diverse miracles the crossing of the Red Sea and others. Manna coming from heaven. The rock bringing forth water. There were, there were miracles. There were signs and wonders. Done. Point number one, the main focus of the Old Testament. Number two, ministerial gifts in the New Testament. Number three, spiritual gifts in the New Testament. And finally, number four, abuse of God's gifts. Now, let's go to number one. The main focus of the Old Testament. I've told you there were miracles there. But what was the main focus? It should remain the main focus today. The main focus in the Old Testament should remain the main focus today. Yes. Were they running after miracles in the Old Testament? Did miracle occupy the people? Was it what God was interested on in performing? Were the leaders, mira, mi, leaders of miracles, mi, leaders of signs and wonders, were they? What was this, the spirit that permeated the Old Testament? What did God want from them? What did their leaders emphasize among them? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1 to 14. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 1 to 14 the Bible says now therefore have hearken O Israel unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you Ye shall not add unto the world which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. The word of God, the statutes of God, the commandment of God, these were the main focus. What Actually, was between God and Israel was his commandment. What God demanded from them was his commandment. Obedience to it. What their leaders, their pastors emphasized on. What their shepherds emphasized on was the world obedience to the world the practice of the world verse 3 your eyes have seen what the lord did because of Baal Peor, 
For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God had destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you this day, cleaving to the Lord in obedience to his word, in obedience to his commandment. That is all. That is all. What permeated the people, what saturated the people is obedience to the world. Micah said, what does the Lord desire of thee but to do righteousness, to show mercy, and to humble yourself? That's what God is looking for. Do justice, the truth. Do truth. Obey truth. Practice truth. Show mercy. Show love. Show love. Love one another. Then humble yourself. All this is the word. Summary of the Old Testament. What God desires. Obedience to his word. Verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. Even as the Lord my God commanded me. That ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Can you see? What makes them unique is the statutes, not the miracles. It's the commandment, not the miracles. And the emphasis of Moses here, the statues, the world. I'm teaching you the world. I'm teaching you the world. Keep the world. Obey the world. You will be a peculiar people. Not miracles, my brethren. Not miracles. The Lord wants to bring us back to the, to, to the main thing. Because the mind of the church has gone for miracles now. Every man, every evangelist, every bishop, Every word is look miracle, miracle, miracle. That's what they're looking for now. But that's not the main focus. The main focus in, in the serving of God is his word. Obedience to his word. To produce righteousness in your life. Righteousness in the people that you shepherd. In the people that you pastor. Give attention to the teaching of the world to the preaching of the world he says in verse 8 and what nation is there so great that had statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day what do you set before the people miracles using salt to pro produce miracles using anointing oil every time miracle every time miracle you're setting miracle before them but here in the old testament it was the world it was the world set before the people it was the word of righteousness set before the people that the preachers the teachers the pastors emphasized upon Yes, verse 9. Only take it to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. Lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Encourage your children on the world. Present this word to your children. To your grandchildren, if you are alive, that what you should pass on is the world, the commandment of God. Because that is the bond between you and God. That's the covenant between you and God. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb. When the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together and I will make them hear my words. That they may learn to fear me all the days 
that they shall live upon the earth and that they may teach their, their children how will they learn to fear God by miracles? Hmm. Today in crusades, all the miracles going on, sinners will clap hands, jump up, but they don't change. It's not by miracles. If therefore crusades spend their time on miracles, they have lost it. They have lost it. And some spend time doing nothing but to miracle, 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 nothing. The people go without the fear of God because the world is not in focus. The mean world of God is not in focus in the crusades. It's not in focus in the revival meetings. It's not in focus in special program. It is miracle, miracle, miracle. The people are not saved. But the Lord said, bring the people. I will speak to them that they, I will show them my world. That they may learn to respect me, fear me, worship me all the days of their life. So they may also teach their children. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye had the voice of the words, but so no similitude. Only ye had a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform even ten commandments and he wrote them upon two tablets and upon two tables of stone and the lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it the lord came to speak mountains shook with power and fire burned was well, there testimony of healing there were there testimony of any miracle there? It was the world. When the Lord came from heaven, with all evidence, all rested on his world. All rested on his word. I'm saying this because your heart has moved to miracles. All your prayer, I'm climbing the mountain, miracle. I'm fasting, miracle. Your mind has moved to miracle as a minister. It is where a, a, a minister shows for himself. Now, you, you have derailed. You are out of, the, your bone is out of joint. Your bone is out of joint. Why? You can't stand again. Your ministry has failed because of changed direction. You have turned aside into another thing. That is, the word of God is not the focus anymore in the ministry. And that is why the church has failed. That is why the denominations fail. Because every denomination is trying to show miracles. Miracles. The people are running in by miracles. Ha! Ah, but the main focus is the world. Teach your children the world. That is what we should understand that's the main focus in our relationship with god yes both in our personal life and in the ministry so it was it in the old testament the servants of god were obedient to his commandment their main aim was the world the revivals among the people of God in the Old Testament were the moments when the word of God was rediscovered and upheld in practice among God's people. When they say there is revival, not miracles. <clears throat> not miracles. It is the rediscovery of the world. It is the renewed energy to face the world. It is the commitment to obedience to the world. Second Chronicles chapter 34. We read, we're going to read verse 18. From verse 18. Then Shaphan, the scribe, told the king, saying, Hilkiah, the priest, had given me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the weights of the law, that he rent his clothes. 
And the king commanded Hilkiah and Ahikam, the son of Shephan, and Abdon, the son of Micah, and Shephan, the scribe, and Asiah, a, a servant of the king, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me. And for them that are left in Israel and in Judah concerning the weights of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us because our fathers have not kept the words of the Lord to do after all that is written in this book. This story is going to show us great revival that came in the days of Josiah. It was not a miracle. It's the discovery of the world. The people had left the world. The people were doing other things. The world, the, the book of the law was abandoned for years. Years. People were not going by it. And so sin abounded everywhere. The world was rediscovered. They kept it somewhere, the book of the law. And as they were walking in the temple, they discovered the book. My joy is you have discovered the book. The word of God. Which our fathers forsook. Which our fathers in ignored. They did their ministry without the, the world. Their thought went on another thing. But you have discovered the world. There's going to be a change in ministry. Your ministry now will produce results. Revival that we are looking for will come. It will come because of the message of the book. The word of God. So, the king sent to inquire, Hey, great is the wrath of God because we have left the part of God. We have left the part of God right from our fathers. Go and inquire of the Lord for me. And Hilkiah, Hilkiah and they that the king had appointed went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvath, the son of Hasra, Keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college. And they spake to her to that effect. And she answered them, Thus hear the Lord God of Israel. Tell ye the man that sent you to me. Thus hear the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof. Even all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Judah. Because they have forsaken me and have burnt incense unto other gods that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. And as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, so shall ye say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel concerning the weights which thou hast heard. Because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou hadest his ways against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, and humblest thyself before me, and didst rend thy clothes, and weep before me, I have heart, I have even heart thee also, seeth the Lord. Behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that i will bring upon this place and upon the inhabitants of the of the same so they brought the king word again the king had the world and changed rent his clothes one that oh wrath has come upon us he repented he was broken he was mourning and the Lord said, go and tell him I have hurt him. He shall escape the judgment that is coming upon the land. Go and tell him. He shall escape. Why? He has a different heart. He hurt my word and got broken down. He did not harden to it. He broke down. He weighed. 
He cried unto me for change in his life. He repented. Go and tell him I have heard. You never had this preaching you are coming to hear here. All these doctrines, you never had them. Your fathers never taught you. Your denominations never let you know them. You were going on your own, following them in mass. Be Why? Why did you not know them? The word was not taught. The word was not dwelt upon. The word was not their focus. Their focus it was, or is who is going to be the leader? Who is going to be the pastor of that place? Of this other place? Where is money? Which place is money? That was their, that's their focus. Their focus is not this world. This world of truth. So you didn't know them. You didn't know them. They were doing another thing. Their own, their own focus was different. In fact, it's a type of social life. Make it a laughing place. Make the church a jovial place. So it is time to tell stories and people laugh. People laugh and say, this pastor, <laughs> this man. That's the, that's the focus. And they're happy when they make people laugh. The world was not known. And now you came here and began to hear doctrines of righteousness. You came here and you said, Hey, is this the world? Is this this thing? How oh, judgment is upon our people. Yes, you are right. I say you are right. Judgment will surely come. None of them shall make heaven. Because none to you, no righteousness there, no holiness there. And the Bible says, without holiness, no eye shall see the Lord. Now you have seen them in their jewelry. And no woman with earring in her ear has ever entered heaven, will ever enter heaven. Perfect truth. Perfect. You don't know. See them in their palming. It's not possible. They cannot be there. They cannot. The world is not among them. The world is not among them. The work of, work of righteousness, the work of restitution is not among them. How will they go? They will not go. They will not go. Is it not God that destroyed everybody remaining eight? Is it not God that saved how many people? Four people from Sodom. And the one that came out of misbehave, he damned that one. Is it God? He was not a respecter of persons. He's not a respecter of denominations. He's not a respecter of titles. Now you come here. Oh, God has seen your heart. God has seen your repentance. God has seen your sorrow. You cried the cry of repentance. The Lord said he has heard. I said the Lord said he has heard your cry and he will treat you differently you will escape the judgment that is coming upon those people because you have repented because you have changed your life by the world not by miracles by the world not by signs and wonders by the world where you not even are you not even performing signs and wonders yourself had that changed you? Are they not even still now performing signs and wonders? Has, has, has that changed them? The word was not among them. Now, what is it? Your eyes have opened as the eyes of Josiah. Let's see the, the revival that followed now. Verse 29. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites and all the people great and small. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood in his place. I made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the ways of the covenant which are written in this book. That is where revival comes. It comes from the world. Revival 
But your own is thinking that revival comes by miracles. All your fasting is for miracles. All your shouting is for miracles. Not by miracle, but by the world. Not by miracles, but by the world. Rediscovery of the world. Rediscovery of proper doctrine. The Lord is changing your focus. He's changing the focus of ministers in the world. Turn to my world, not miracles. Miracles don't take anybody to heaven turn to my world it is the world that sanctifies it is the world that gives you a born again experience that sanctifies you the world of god that purifies and equips you for heaven is the world the doctrines of righteousness the doctrines of heaven that's what we're saying now the king had changed the king had been made better the king had enjoyed sanctification purification by the world discovered by the world discovered my prayer is your life will pass through transformation your life will pass through change your life will be translated by the world your vision will change your thoughts will change your the weights of your mouth will be different Coming from the discovery of the world. Discovery of the true world. True doctrine of scripture. Now, see the minister of this man now. See the minister of this man. Verse 31. And the king stood in his place. And made a covenant before the Lord. To walk after the Lord. And to keep his word, his commandments. And his statutes. And his, just, um, uh, and, and, and his statutes his testimony with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the weights of the covenant which are written in this book can we read verse 32 together one two go exactly that is revival that is revival and he caused and he caused and he enforced all that were praising in jerusalem and benjamin to stand to it the king is serious no laughter in the pulpit anymore the king is serious pastor is serious now this man now is pastor although he was king by pastor now Passed over God's people. He's serious. Pulpit mannerism has changed. All those jesting is because your eyes didn't open to the world. Talking and their people are laughing. Sinners are laughing. Women, corrupt women in their wicked dressing are laughing and beating their love because of pastor. It's because the pastor didn't have a vision. He didn't have the world. But now, the pastor has got the world. People should change. I say people should change. I say people should change. A man came across divine revelation. The testimony of divine revelation in Kano. After the, with a crusade like this, I was there. Then he went to his church and told them, he said, everybody hear me. This is a different man standing before you. Never go out to ease yourself until I have finished. All this careless movement up and down, no more, until I have finished. I have been fattening you for the day of slaughter. But today, I'm going to wash my hands from your blood. He began. Because he got the word in the conference, in the crusade. In the conference, we had ministers conference then. We got the word and he came and put it down. Nobody went to ease himself. Nobody. Sit down there until I finish. I've been playing with you here. Wow! He discovered the world. What miracles happened there? It was the world. The change that man. You will go back to your church. Your preaching will change. You will wash your hands from the blood of those people that you kept 
milking their milk like a female cow you are going to wash your hands now wow the king has stood to his ground and caused every man there every woman to do the world to perform the world yes and in verse 33 and josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that pertained to the children of israel and made all that were present in israel to serve even to serve the lord their god and all his days they departed not from following the lord the god of their fathers revival this is the revival we are looking for but we must come back to the world yes signs and wonders should not be the one driving us should not be our focus should not be our focus that's the body we're dealing with the soul yes i'm talking about the revival of the old testament church was the revival of the world see it again in the book of ezra ezra chapter 7 verse 10 ezra chapter 7 verse 10 for ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the lord and to do it and to teach in israel statutes and judgments there are people now their preparation is to perform miracles every sick person must be healed i, I prayed for them how many people were healed oh hey heavy people hey in fact 50 people were healed good it's not that it's wrong but let not no, let that not be your focus see ezra here a minister of righteousness a minister of revival he prepared himself to seek the law of the lord and to do it and to teach in israel statutes and judgments now in Nehemiah chapter 8, Nehemiah chapter 8, the Bible tells us here, 8 to 12. Chapter 8, verse 8 to 12. So they read in the book, in the law of God, distinctly, and gave the sins, and caused them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, which is the Tashata, and Ezra, the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the Lord. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy unto our god our lord neither be ye sorry for the joy of the lord is your strength so the levites stilled all the people saying hold your peace for the day is holy neither be ye grieved and all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth because they had understood the words that were declared unto them can you see revival through the world revival through the world the word made plain the word with clear interpretation the people understood it it pierced their hearts and they went into crying it pierced their heart they went into crying into mourning into weeping because of their sins and by that the lord pushed them it became a joyful moment that's revival that's revival the revival of holiness coming through the world that's the focus i'm saying that's the focus that's the main thing that transpired between god and his people israel it's the main thing it's the main thing 
is the main thing miracles signs and wonders were mostly performed for necessities not the order of life they were mostly performed for necessities god brought them to the red sea he must perform miracle for them to cross there was a necessity there in their work in the in the, in the desert there were many times they were thirsty and the lord would perform miracle to give them water from the rock give to turn bitter water into sweetness it was necessity it was necessity manna came down from heaven a necessity miracles were performed from the perform among them but necessity necessity it was not just performed for performing sake it was because there was a need for it the serpent of, of of brass brought healing to the people necessity necessity not the main thing not the main thing it was just required required among them check the miracles the sun stood still there was a need for it the enemies of god were avenged there was a need for it for necessity not the main thing but why is it not taking the first place in the present church why is miracle taking the first place why is miracle occupying your mind occupying the church as the first thing everybody's on miracle 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 and there's no righteousness and therefore the god of miracle has withdrawn that's why they're faking it now you see it and we have to start from there because the new testament the foundation of it is the old testament see how it went in the old testament yes other miracles also occurred by the sovereign decision of god even without people asking for them other miracles the lord says i'm going to show, stretch forth my hand upon egypt pharaoh will not let you go except with a mighty hand decision of god the decision of god he chose it and all those other ones is the sovereign work of god just god wanted to make a show god wanted to show something that is why he performed those ones that one is left to god that one is left to god the people, um, the people did not base their relationship with God on miracles. No. The main thing, the keeping of the commandment. The keeping of the world. If ye will obey my commandment, ye will be a peculiar people unto me. It's obeying the commandment. Now number two, ministerial gifts in the New Testament. You have now got clearly the foundation of the whole thing. How relationship with God should go. That is not miracles. It is the world. Ministerial gifts in the New Testament. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 to verse 14. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 to 14. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. We are for, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that, ascend, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far or above all heavens that he might fill all things and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the defying of the body of christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine 
by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Now, read, you understand this. In the New Testament, the Lord distributes gifts to his ministers for the purpose of the ministry. The choice of which, which ministry gift a person should operate in is of God and not of man. The choice we have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. These are gifts. It's not, they are not there for you to choose. To choose the title you want. No. God gives them. God gives them. In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 4. Concerning his own gifts, and no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. You don't look at the, 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 the offices and say, which one do I take? Which one do I take? Okay, I will take it. No! It's a gift. And that gift does not come from yourself. It comes from God. And no man taketh this gift unto himself, but they that are given by God, as Aaron was given the gift to be a high priest, as Aaron was called. So, that's what we should know. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, the Bible says, But all this worketh, that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. The will is of God. The decision is of God. What to give you comes from God. It's not your decision. It's not what you want, but what he wants. That's what we need to understand. The development of these ministerial gifts may take their time to be clearly manifest. The ministers of God should serve the Lord as he guides and as the opportunity opens without picking a title for, for, uh, for, for his ministry, without picking a title for his ministerial performance, without picking a title from these ministerial gifts to be working with it. This general title for a man of God in ministry is pastor, which means shepherd. We saw it in the Old Testament. That's the general title, pastor, shepherd. Although the pastor is a gift here, but over there we notice that it's a general title for whoever is taking care of God's people. A shepherd, although there's still the gift of a pastor, a shepherd. In the Old Testament, those called prophets were those prominently known to be used by God to deliver God's word by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Believers should be ready to serve the Lord as servants of God without struggling for titles of titles of ministerial gifts. Serve the Lord. Let your attention be on. I'm, I'm an evangelist. I'm a prophet. I'm an apostle. I am. No! Serve the Lord. Those are gifts. They will manifest in your ministry, in their way, in their time. But don't, let that not be your focus. Your focus is the service of God. But carnality among men wanting to promote themselves over others make them to go and begin to pick these ministerial gifts and give themselves they pick these ministerial gifts and give themselves and it is a confusion in the body of christ this confusion must be removed this confusion must be removed because you give honor to yourself that god has not given you appoint something to, for yourself that God has not appointed. Why? Do you know 
that not everybody in the New Testament, I mean the New Testament, that served as a minister that was called an apostle. Are you aware of that? Not everybody. There were key people that that was given to them, but not everybody. It was never mentioned that Timothy was an apostle. It was never mentioned that Titus was an apostle. Just a pastor, a bishop, an elder. That's all. And they served the Lord and finished their work. Produced fruits of eternal life and have themselves inherited eternal life. They served the Lord. No, it's not everybody. Then why did you go and pick it? Wow. Did you go and pick it? And now he's bringing strife in the body of Christ. Now he's bringing contention in the body of Christ. He's giving you honor, undue honor. Who gave you that honor? Over the people of God. Who gave it to you? God? Who is witness? What is the witness? An apostle has his own sign. Because Paul says, the sign of an apostle has been wrought among you. What signs now followed you because you are an apostle? Prophet. I am a prophet. I'm saying the flesh must die for the unity of the body of Christ. All this thing must die because it becomes a confusion. It's a small young boy who came up at the age of 19 and say he is now preaching and say I am apostle you are apostle who how did you arrive at that the church is at liberty to do what it wants the church is at liberty waiting for that day when the, the true shepherd shall ask them questions but you are wise. Thank God you are here for you to be corrected and brought to the right way. In Jesus' name. Yes. That's the, what God wants us to know. The ministers of God should serve the Lord as he guides them, leads them. Come. Do you know that as time went on in the church, nobody emphasized these titles but served the Lord under the name overseer, pastor? Nobody bothered. But they, let God show them. Let God manifest them. The titles became... The title and these ministerial titles. Well, check it up. Many great men of God didn't use them. I'm pastor this. That's all. Shepherding the people of God. You are a pastor, I'm a pastor. That's all. So let's go forward to learn more. The general title for a man of God in ministry is pastor, which means shepherd. Yes. Believers should be ready to serve the Lord as servants of God without struggling for titles of ministerial gifts. In Romans chapter 12, verse 4 to verse 8, the Bible says, For as many, I mean, uh, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and everyone members one of another having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry let us wait on our ministering or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorted on exhortation he that giveth let him do it with simplicity he that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. The Lord will bless you in the body of Christ to perform services of his will. Whatever, wherever he puts you, do it. 
Do the service. It is service. Do the service. Wherever he puts you. Do the service. And in verse 3 of chapter 12. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Your faith level, our faith levels vary. Our faith levels vary. Don't employ the flesh into your ministry. We're not of the same rank in ministry. You might be of lower rank according as the Lord judged you and gave you grace. Operate in that level. Don't aim at high things. Don't. Don't raise up yourself. The extra raising is the flesh. And it contaminates what you have been doing. Stay humble. Stay humble. Don't struggle to be as that other man. No, we're not the same. We're not the same. We have different levels. Not by our power, but by the grace of God. By the rating of God. Therefore, let every man be content. Let every man operate at his level in peace. And then there will be no struggle in the body of Christ. He that has higher grace, let him move forward. We that have lower grace, let's follow. Peace. No struggling. No envy. No flesh. That's what God wants us to understand. Number three, spiritual gifts in the New Testament. Spiritual gifts in the New Testament. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 11. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto dumb idols, even as ye were laid. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit, and there are differences of, of administration but the same Lord, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with her. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, and to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another designing of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues these spiritual gifts are given for the purpose of ministry they serve to convince the sinners of the truth of the gospel as god manifests them steers you to manifest them in you my they are given by god to you and god steers you to use them he passes through you to manifest them what for to convince sinners to believe this gospel. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 4. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of the world, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that hurt him, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. According
according to his own will they may not rampantly be following you yet you're carrying the world for the main thing is the world god can steer them in your life to perform them praise god so don't turn to them don't force them don't say i must perform miracle here why are you doing that then it is your power is that the main thing according to his own will according to your level of faith god will perform these things god will do them a story was told of some two or three ladies you would have heard them that said jesus walked on the water so they too can walk on the water so they held their hands and began to enter into the river the river was getting deeper they said they felt that maybe at the point that they will be sus their leg will not come on the ground then they will start walking on the river, on the water but they were drowned did you hear the story you heard the story yes it's not the god did not intend you to do that there was not a need for that there was not going to be any glory to him for that it's not part of his plan you cannot break this thing by yourself you can't therefore be peaceful but give focus to the world focus on the world do i pray that signs and wonders should follow to authenticate my word pray but leave it to god do i pray for the people at all pray and leave it to god but don't get carried away with it don't the main thing is the world this world you can preach it at all times the word is near thee even in thy mouth the word of faith you can preach it at all, all moments signs follow let the lord make the signs to follow let the lord steer you into the signs maybe when you preach and the lord does not lead you to pray for people don't force yourself don't force yourself it's not of your making you're not preaching yourself so don't force yourself i must perform signs here you may go into the flesh and contaminate your ministry so that's what we need to understand the signs also serve to edify i mean the spiritual gifts also serve to edify the church of christ in first corinthians chapter 14 verse 3 and verse 36 first corinthians 14 verse 3 the bible says but he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort they are for to edify the church you minister in the church and the children of god can get their needs made you have the gift of healing the lord steers you in this gift to perform them in the church or an individual comes to you you pray for him and it is done the church is edified by that or the gift of prophecy you the lord makes give passes through you to give a message in the church that would deliver the whole church from a disaster or that will open the eyes of the church to the will of god or an individual in the church we are edified by that yes and let the lord be the one to do it let the lord if somebody is there in the church that has the gift of prophecy don't force him don't always go to him don't be looking to him the world is the focus the world you have the world preach it stay by it pray by it leave it to god don't put your eye there is a heart of a particular uh, ministry and there was a lady there who was a pro who was prophesying so the pastor wanted a, wanted to take a decision so he gathered all his people the dealers come together with this prophecy this our this lady who prophesied and laid hand upon her prophesy in jesus name prophesy <laughs> I i'm telling you these people have gone and this lady under under durex began to say oh, 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 oh. and be saying whatever will come to her mind to set herself free immediately because she was under durex 
That's idolatry. That's backsliding. You have eyes turned from Christ to a man. If God has a word, is, must he speak through prophecy? Is there no other way he can tell you? Must he speak at that time? Can he not also speak later? Have you really sought him enough? Sought him enough? But you see this carnality. Put away this carnality from the church. Face the world. Everybody say the world. Say it again. Say it again. You have the world. Stay to the world. Consult the world. Pray by the world. Preach the world. It's the world. Then revival will come. Light will shine on your way. We are to desire spiritual gifts and pray for their manifestation in our life and ministry. We should operate them in righteousness and holiness. Note that it is the Holy Spirit that operates them in us at his will. What we need is to sanctify ourselves and present ourselves to God as vessels unto vessels meet for the master's use vessels unto honor we also should operate according to the proportion of our faith even as god has dealt to everyone pride and carnality must be resisted in us let's have in mind that there are people that possess natural talents from birth or from training which manifest as spiritual gifts these can be trusted when they come over to Christ, but should not be fully relied on if they remain sinners, for such can be manipulated by sin in them and by Satan that controls them. Some people can dream, and the dream will come to pass. Don't always go to rely on them. If they are righteous, the Lord can purify them and continue that grace in their lives. And it will be coming well. If, there's, if they remain sinners, they can still do that once in a while. Don't lay her, yourself on that sinner woman. And she can say something. In fact, she can dream. My daughter can dream. Don't rely on her. Rely on the world. Rely on the world. Rely on the world. It is the surer and surest ground for righteousness, for victory, and for heaven. Finally, abuse of God's gifts. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 to 15. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 to 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Many in the church today abuse divine order in ministerial and spiritual gifts. How is there this abuse? What are these abuse? See them as follow. Number one, false claim of divine ministry gift and title see these people here they say they are apostles are they they say they were apostles were they the bible says they were ministers of satan and that is how many claim these titles and operate fully because this title gives them honor apostle this but they're ministers of satan god didn't give it to them number two human ordination and impartation of titles and ministerial office there are people who go about ordaining people giving them titles see what paul said in galatians chapter one he said Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. I am Paul, the apostle, not by human ordination. They are a team of people. 
that go about and ordaining people or maybe a team of bishop or they call it college of bishop having a senior bishop as bishop that goes about ordaining people what an abuse to the gospel of christ confusion in the church giving honor to whom god has not given honor giving spiritual gifts to carnal men that god has not judged right has not judged them worthy of it he didn't give it them by gift he didn't give them by gift a man was chastising paul said paul will you paul said will you chastise a man that is a romans he said uh -uh. are you a roman yes he said i bought my own with money paul said i was natural born there's a difference between the two of us. I was born there. This is gift, but you bought your own with money. Which one then is authentic? Thank the Lord. I mean, this spiritual gift, are you buying it with money? When uh, uh, Simon the sorcerer offered money, what did Peter say? Thy money perish with thee. Because thou hast thought that the gift of God should be bought with money. But this is what people are going about now. You pay, they can make you reverend. They make you bishop. They make you apostle. Give them another title, they will make you go about making people. And the people are bearing it. It's backsliding in the church of Christ. They have left the world. They are going to carnal honor. Taking the title of God by force. Putting upon themselves spiritual gifts by force. Giving it to whomsoever they will for money. Simon the sorcerer. That's abuse in the church. Again, the misuse of the title bishop. In First Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired a good war. Is it anything? An elder. A bishop is an elder. A bishop is a pastor, an elder, an overseer. But how has it been that the church has curved this title for some other people alone? Only some people should be bishop. Others should not be. What is it? It's just for honor's sake. But will your honor distort the Bible? Do you have to distort the Bible to give honor to people? Please, we are pointing out this so that the man of God should be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works so that as you go in ministry, there be no blemish in your life. God should see no fault in your life. Yes. Again, comment. Now, we want to maybe come in on the title Reverend. Reverend. Let's go to the book of Psalm 11, Psalm 111, verse 9. Psalm 111, verse 9. We just want to come in this, on this briefly to cause understanding and to contention shall cease. He sent redemption unto his people. He had commanded his covenant forever holy and reverend is his name there are people that contend that nobody should be called reverend why they say reverend is just, is to the name of the lord but those people are wrong the word reverend is an adjective various adjectives have followed the name of the lord various adjectives now even in this scripture two adjectives are mentioned on the name of the lord one holy two reverend they are the same capacity the same weight can man bear them yes the man of god can bear them even not bearing it can it is it can be it can accrue to the man of god in fact he's ordained for a man of god by the scriptures look at it in the book of second kings chapter four 
verse 8 and 9. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 8 and verse 9. It says, And it fell on the day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in Tita to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God. Can you see that? Holy was used for the name of the Lord. And holy was used for a man here. Yes. Reverend can be used for the name of the Lord. And reverend can be used for man who is of God. That is holy. That is righteous. That is serving the Lord. To be honored. Do you know that the, man of the, the minister of the gospel is really to be revered? Reverend, be revered. Revive him. Respect him. That's what it means. Respect her? Yes. In First Thessalonians chapter 5. I read verse 12 and verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 12 and 13. The Bible says, And we beseech you, brethren, to, own, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly. Is that, no, is that at the same category of reverence or more? If it is not, it's at the same category to honor them, to respect them very highly. That's reverence. That's reverence to mean of God. If they give, if some churches choose to give that to their to, to pastors among them, we will not say they are sinning against God. No. It's just this is a respected preacher. This is an honored preacher. Look at it in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and let the wife see that she reverence her husband. Isn't that the same word? If a woman can reverence her husband, it means she's her, the husband is her, her reverend. It's a person I river. It's a person I respect. Let's stop arguments. Let's go by scripture and silence those arguments. Yes. And may the Lord give us peace in Jesus' name. Spiritual gifts are also abused. They are false claim of spiritual gifts. People claim that they have the gift of prophecy. It's a lie. False claim. They have the gift of healing. It's a lie. False claim. There is lying wonders performed in the name of spiritual gifts. They arrange some things. As they do them in Lagos and other places. Arrange some things and tell you, hey, God's power. The gift of God, power, the gift of healing. It's a lie. It's an abuse of the whole thing. It's abuse of the whole thing. And hey, we can raise the dead. They will arrange for somebody to enter into a coffin. And say, when I come and beat that coffin in the name of the Lord, I shake it, answer inside. And they offer money just to deceive the church of God. Abuse of the whole matter. Why? Because of these miracles that we have turned to. That the church has turned to. Everybody now is turned to miracle. Not the world again. That's gone to abuse. Yes. Lying testimonies. Given to back up false claim. Ministers will tell you testimonies. Write them in their books. It's never like that. Never like that. In one of these places. A preacher. A pastor, a, a pastor was, uh, preach, was preaching and was, wanted to show his members the power of God, the gift of God in his life. He said, I was in my office. A madman came into my office and I rebuked the spirit out of him and cast out the devils. The madman was, came back to his, to his senses and we changed her, his cloth and he's doing well now. Vero was there. Vero, 
Is, was that what you observed? Vero is a member of the church. Instead of embarrassing pastor, I said, Pastor, when did that one happen? Vero stood up and said, Yes, I was there waiting for the judgment day. I'm telling you, these people, abuse of spiritual gift in the church of Christ. Why? Because attention has gone after miracles. Satanic consultation for power and replica gifts. They go to Satan to give them knowledge of things, of what Satan is doing among people. Satan should tell them. And Satan gives them because he's going to honor him. Hey, you are there. This is what it's happening to yesterday when you went to your village. Your mother said like this. And since that time you started having a stubborn egg. Yes, Satan went with you to the village. And Satan really saw your stomach egg. Who brings stomach egg? Is it not the devil? And he gave to this man. It became a gift. Satanic gift. Because people are looking for miracles. They have turned away from the world. You will go and bring them back to the word of God. I say you will go and bring them back to the word of God. That is the, the commandment of this end time. Yes. The use of substances. Considered as anointed. Anointed handkerchief. Anointed apron. Some of these my people there are busy wearing it. Putting it over the sick. The use of sun. The use of oil. The use of uh, stones, use of water, use of salt, use of anything else, use of calendar, use of, all for miracle. It's a lie. I've told you, if the Lord would use a substance once in a while, from one man, it will not flow to other people. And that same man should not put it tomorrow. Because the Lord knows the effect of those substances in the heart of people they go to keep them they buy this apron and tie them around them and their faith is in apron they carry this handkerchief and keep them in their box whenever there's a problem they don't go for they don't call jesus they go to handkerchief it becomes an idol the law will not allow that they, those, those things be dead in your life kill them wherever they are turn attention to the world the world the world, the word of God, it should be our attention, it should be our ministry, it should be our preaching, it should be our singing, it should be our pursuit. Go to conferences for the world, not miracles. The world, not miracles. The world, it is the world that gives eternal life, it is the world that gives eternal life, it is the world that brings revival. End time revival is not by miracles, it is by the world. Demonic materials are now walking in the church in the name of signs and wonders. Now the Lord is calling you away from those people. Come out from those dirty game. Don't put them in your ministry. Don't use handkerchief in your ministry. Don't use those dirty things in your ministry. You will not be among the people bringing revival in this end time. Cleanse yourself. Wash your hands that are defiled with deceit. Confess your deceit and ask the spirit of God, the spirit of ministry, the spirit of righteousness to anoint you for this end time. Let's rise up upon our feet and go before the Lord. That's what the Lord is saying. That's what the Lord brought you here for. That's what he brought you here for. Receive the true anointing. It is on the world to preach the world. Season and out of season. Don't pursue signs and wonders. Don't pursue signs and wonders. They are to follow. And the Lord is the one to order them to follow you. Go ahead and be preaching the world. and cry and repent 
and repent. You have deceived people with these things. You have turned the people's attention to these things. You have not made any progress in ministry. of all those corrupt ministry telling lies walking after the flesh because you must perform miracle assuming titles that God has not given you the world preach the world preach the world you will serve the people you will serve the people spend time on miracles pursue miracles you will waste the people let God bring miracles at his will Move forward with the world. Miracles will follow you. The Holy Ghost will steer them in their right time. The Lord, the Holy Ghost will pour them down in their right time. According to his will. All blind men must not, must not see in your ministry. But they must go to heaven in your ministry. Then focus more on the world. the barren women may not give birth to children in your ministry but let them go to heaven in your ministry focus on the world Jesus name we pray give me that all time religion give me that I need that father give me that all time Jesus give me that I need that for it was good for John and Peter It was good for John and Peter. Uh. 
Father, give me that old time religion. I need that old time religion. It is good. Father, give me that old time religion. Thank you, Jesus. Wash the power of the Lord is coming down. It was good for Mary and Martha. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We need it. For it was good for Mary and Martha. Father, give me that old time religion. Father, give me that old time religion. For it was good for Paul and Silas. For it was good for Paul and Silas. Father, give me that old time religion. Father, give me that old time religion. For it is good for us in Horemo. Ha! Wash it. For it is good for us in Horemo. Father, give me that all time. Jesus, give me that all time. I need that all time religion. It is good. Give me that. Jesus, give me that. Amen. I want to commit you to God in this respect of the ministry. May God choose you. May God work out these things in your life. May God make you one of the end time preachers of end time revival. Raise up your hands before the Lord. Almighty Father, you have done a wonderful thing to gather to you all these ministers. 
because you are about doing a new thing you are already coming you want last gathering of the fruits you want the holiness of the church you want the church to move in the truth and therefore you gather this one let the holy ghost take over their lives in jesus name let this truth pass through their lives let their eyes open truly to this truth let their hearts accept this truth i close up all leakages in their lives i open up every blockade in their lives oh lord fill them in jesus name let them go and prosper let them go and do it let them go and fulfill your will thank you for answering our prayers in jesus name we pray the message you have just listened to is a production of holiness revival movement worldwide holiness revival movement worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816 902 Three nine four eight O zero eight zero five six eight three four three two three. You can also reach us through our email address Holiness Revival Movement at Gmail dot com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my
I believe you, Lord, cause you are. 